Features and traits and proficiencies and languages from compendium compatible to simple. That'll bring it back. And then you can copy stuff. Anyway, so it's on the gear. This is. No, I'm looking at the wrong place, I think. Oh, I see you. Wait. Yeah, found it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, they put in. They made all the traits and, and proficiencies and everything compatible with, like, posting in the chat and pulling out of the compendium, so. I see. Well, I've got. Um, is there a merchant in town, Matt? Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is. There's a general store that's run by a kindly old uh, Havling. Okay. Um, what did we get from, uh, from Kerwin for our uh, brave expedition? Yeah, let me, let me work on that here. Okay. Because I've got a couple of rings and, and a dagger that I think I want to sell. But I, I want to see what we get first. <laughs> it may affect my bartering. All right. All my stuff now, but some of it's still... Still missing. Missing. So I can see all my features and traits now. So this but is but my equipment. The my whole equipment box is blank now. Oh, really? Tools and proficiencies, and my basically everything, like personality traits, ideals, bonds, like all that is blank. Maybe switch inventory to simple as well. Maybe it's in there. Sorry, what were you saying, Matt? Oh, I've got it. I put it in chat. 250 gold oh. pieces apiece. Oh, snap. She offered you 125 per signet per character. Dear Lord. Wow. I am wealthy. I'm independently wealthy. <laughs> Okay, so that brings me up to 311, it looks like. And Brett, I've got your sheet open. I'm just wanting to look and see. That's why you're, if it's acting weird, that's why it's acting weird. Boy, I'm just not used to looking at the player sheet, so I can't help a lot. <laughs> um, I'm, I always look at NPCs, which look a whole lot different from this. Let's see if it exists over in attributes some in your attributes somewhere. It's got to exist there. There's a little information box on the new character sheet and it says looking for missing data, your data is in the simple version that can be re-enabled from the settings tab of the character sheet under general options and then feats and traits to set this section to be simple. All right. I already did that. I'm going to stop messing with um, Brett's sheet now. Inventory, simple. Man, my charisma is terrible. Assuming inventory and equipment are the same, but... Blank. It should be, uh... It's weird. If, if you cannot recover it, I think we can assume he he is carrying that tome of dragon. I I can't imagine he gave I, it away. Yeah, I thought that he. Pretty had sure it. I took that. Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go march over to the little halfling merchant's place and 
see if I can hawk off some of this stuff. <laughs> All right. I've got, I've got two rings, a silver amulet. Uh, all three of those apparently are worth 15 gold pieces. And then I have an ornate dagger that I have listed at 125. Although I don't think I'm going to get anything near any of those. Yeah, the... Um... I think the jewelry trades it one for one. I think it's weapons and equipment that doesn't trade one for one. Oh, really? Okay. I think that's that's how it works. So yeah, I'm not sure myself. We're just we're just doing this one by the book. But I think still, like, I'm still carrying those gems around too. I don't remember how much those were worth, but I know we I had those. Did you all split those up evenly? The gems? I don't think so. I was just carrying them. Hmm. Yeah, gems, jewelry, art objects, and trade goods retain their value. Okay. So it's arms, armor, and equipment. So if you're selling a short sword, uh, it sells for half the cost usually. But but all the gems and everything retain full value. So if you want to get rid of them and cash them in, you can do that. Okay. What about this dagger and I hold up a dagger with this ornate filigree sort of on the handle and, and sort of climbing up the blade and oh. I hold it up and I say I think it's real elvish steel work okay so he, he kind of adjusts his glasses a little bit to have a look at it takes it from you that turns it a little bit and uh, did I tell you how much it was worth when you took it, or? Yeah, I've got uh, 125 listed gold pieces. All right, so he, he looks at it, scrutinizes it a little bit, uh, and says he'll give you 125 for it. Sets it on the counter. Starts digging, of... starts digging the, the gold out, sing it, setting it up in front of you. I... Uh... I sort of react, and I, I am suspiciously, and I say, oh, I sort of nervously grab my beard. That'll do fine. <laughs> All right. He kind of takes it. He starts polishing it a little bit. Uh, hey, you can tell he feels like he'll he'll fetch a handsome sum for this eventually, so he's satisfied with the deal. I'm satisfied as well. If you're going to kill someone, why not do it fabulously? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I can imagine for having such a fancy dagger. So, out of all that... That's another 30. Another 15. 170 gold pieces. So, um... I'll go ahead and divvy that up to the rest of the party so you guys will get you want to divide it by four five four or five I guess it'd be five with glory Every, everyone will get 34 gold pieces we don't have to tell them about this don't tell Jake <laughs> don't tell Jake um, okay Hey, do we want to sell these gems or keep them as like bartering of shiny things to trade? I think they were only worth like 30 each if I remember right. It, it might be handy to keep them around, yeah, not in, not in gold uh, form. Gems can be a nice alternate currency. <laughs> Okay, so I have something in my inventory called Druic Focus. I think it's a scroll that I can't use. Dru Druidic I... Focus? Yes, Druidic Focus. Oh, no, that's like... Uh, that's something that can be used for spells, I think, although I don't remember ex exactly in what fashion, but it's usually like... Um, you know, like a stick of unworked hickory or yeah. like a mistletoe wreath or something like that. Yeah, that's something that Right. I th I don't think you ever really designated that. That comes at character creation. Yeah. 
and it's something you use. It gives you it's it's part of your bonus as a druid when you have access to that focus, your attack bonus. But you get to describe uh, what it is. It can be a twig or a wand or but like for a druid, it's probably something nature oriented. Like for a wizard, the focus is probably a wand. For for a paladin, like like Brett, it would be a religious symbol, an ankh or a cross or something like that. But but for a druid, it's probably going to be something related to nature somehow or other. Okay. So, and you and you can describe exactly what it is. It has the same effect, you know, no matter how you describe it. It's flavor. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, my focus is just like an old rusty chain. <laughs> yeah, your focus is just like a hammer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Well, other than that, I have. Oh, well, I think as we were going through the dungeon, I was just like, yeah, you guys take this stuff. And now I'm just like, oh, I want money. <laughs> 120 gold pieces so I'm, I'm doing okay even druids know that gold makes the world go round even druids <laughs> nah it's, it's true um hmm I don't know how I have it, but I have a ton of gold. <laughs> I have. Um, how much? I, have... I mean, I know it's tacky to talk about finances. But... <laughs> well, exactly how rich are you? Um, I have four hundred and seventy gold. Dang! Yeah, you but... could, you could buy a. I don't know Dungeons and Dragons money. <laughs> I could it. buy one piece of nice armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much. that's it's it's the equivalent of like buying the golden armor in Minecraft. Yeah, I'm loaded. I could buy like a breastplate, or are you seeing like some splint mail? what uh what you can buy um well it's in the on handbook in the town. Yeah. oh yeah it's in the player's handbook yeah any anything that is like a non-magical good a common good in the the uh player's handbook you're you're gonna be able to find that somewhere in oakhurst okay. yeah so like page 145 or 149 in the player's handbook has weapons and armor. Yeah. And then adventuring gear is on page 150. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I actually need anything, guys. I'm just going to see if there's... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I can... Oh, snap. Anything that's better than what I have. I go, I burst into the halfling shop and I go, oh, one more thing. And I pull out a chain, chain mail shirt. And I say, <laughs> I forgot about this. And I throw it on the counter. <laughs> I just noticed that I had that in my inventory. Oh, he says, I'm running a little light on gold now, but uh, I'll have a look at it. It's, it's a chain shirt, medium armor. He kind of scrutinizes it, notices that there's a couple of uh, weaknesses in the the armor there. Um, doesn't look really well polished or anything like that, but he'll give you 20 gold for it. 20 gold. Mm. 20. What would you say to 30? I could give it a little spit shine. Oh, and I pull out a rag and kind of spit on it. Eh? That may or may not be adding to the value of the <laughs> the, dwar the dwarf drool may or may not add to the value of it. Um, Could be subtracting, perhaps. But you can make 
a um, you can make a persuasion charisma check. Oh, this is not going to be good. This is not my strong suit. Yeah, not yeah you're close, but it, he's not really sold on it. He's sticking on his 20 for this one. All right, fine. And I give him the chain shirt and I take the 20 gold. Because who wants to haul around a chain shirt that they don't need? See, he knows this. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. 30 gold was exactly what I needed to get it to exactly 500 gold. That's all I was trying to accomplish. <laughs> Close enough, though. I'm at 490. So, I know I'm not a bard or anything, but I really want to buy a flute. Just like to have. <laughs> Just to kind of take on an instrument? Yeah, I think I think it would be fun to learn an instrument. Okay. Random fluting. Sure. Who cares how much I go to whoever sells flutes in this town? And then any time you want to practice, you let me know, and we'll slowly maybe you'll slowly you can develop some skills, uh, performance skills. <laughs> you got to get a skill rank in performance really before you're going to be any good at it. <laughs> okay, I can try. Uh, how much is the flute? The flute is... You can buy a really nice starter flute. I mean, this is even nicer than the plastic recorders that the elementary school kids play. You can buy a really nice one for two gold pieces. Oh, wow. Now, mind you, this isn't the Stradivarius of, uh, you know, f of instruments, of flutes, or any other kind of instrument in this world, but it's it's something good to learn on. It's a good starter. I'm just going to add that to my inventory. Sweet. going to... I'm a flautist, I guess. Is that how you pronounce it? Flautist? Yeah. yeah. We, all right. Hmm. What else can I get that's completely useless? That's <laughs> <laughs> completely useless. <laughs> Ooh, how about paper and ink? I just, Sugarcane wants to work on her drawing abilities, like her arts. <laughs> Keep in mind, you may have to travel like long distances and carry stuff in your backpack. So, but probably the paper and ink isn't going to take up, but negligible weight. Keep in mind that the dwarf has a bag of holding. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> Forget it. You can buy a whole house if you want to. <laughs> yeah, stuff anything in there. There is a limit, though. I forget what it is. Well, I don't. Tr I don't trust the dwarf with my flute. I'm afraid he'll get his gross slobber on it. What? Come on. Brett, are you still struggling with your sheet? Uh, I mean, basically it's just my um, equipment that has vanished, but everything else is back. Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully you can remember what it was or figure out something to do with it. And to see if, like, if I go to the other format, if it's Oh, wait, there we go. Found it. When I switch back to the other format, it's it's got my... It doesn't have any of the equipment that I, like, wrote in. Yeah. Rails, but it's got all the things from the compendium. Okay. So I do have that stuff, like the hooded lantern, and I have a bunch of spears, and priest pack, and random stuff. Yeah, so, okay. So I do have a few things to sell, actually. Okay. So I've got, I, I picked up this chain mail. Picked up a, an extra war hammer. And let's see. That's it. Okay. So the chain mail can, will go for, 
because he likes the look of you and he always appreciates a man of the cloth, he's going to give you uh, 30, 30, 38 for the chain mail. And then what else did you say? Uh, I have a Warhammer. Yeah, that's like he has to kind of drag it across the floor behind the counter because he's not not very strong. Uh, but he has a good look at the Warhammer, and he gives you, he'll give you eight for that. Perfect. I'll take it. Hmm. Yeah. That so I have a question. Can hold up to five hundred okay. pounds. Um. If so, my character has um dark vision. Okay. By a spy glass, would that enhance my dark vision? A spy glass? I don't think so. What? Now you can look if you get going in your browser. If you put, uh, if you go to the site called dndbeyond.com. Okay. You can like search for just about. Well, you can't search for anything, but every there's a lot of stuff you'll be able to find in there, including like what is a spyglass and what does it do. It'll tell you exactly what it does. Um. Actually. Yeah, there's Mike. objects objects viewed through the spyglass are magnified to twice their size. So it just makes things bigger, so yeah, that wouldn't have any effect on dark vision. Dang it. Alright, never mind then. Just keep just gotta keep looking. You can you instead of seeing things that are small and indistinguishable, you see things that are large and indistinguishable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, if if you're in the dark and it's within sixty feet of you and you look at it through a spyglass, you can see it. <laughs> yeah, it's just bigger. What about soap? Can I buy soap? Soap. I don't know. I'm seeing it on the like the list. You're a dru you're a druid. This is an adventuring party. Well, yeah. All Let the more reason. Baths in the wilderness. Two, two copper pieces. You can take a <laughs> bar of soap with you. You can. Yes, if you want. Is it all natural, cruelty free? That that'll cost you an extra five copper pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. ensure that it's not tested on animals. Okay. <laughs> okay. This wouldn't exist yet. <laughs> oh man, sugarcane is that that person like at the supermarket when they're like asking for <laughs> checker like is this cruelty free they're just like i don't know <laughs> yeah i suspect um, mostly you just get odd looks when you ask questions like that in towns like oakhurst uh, i'm not putting that in the bag of holding that's not going in there <laughs> it'll make everything smell too nice i, I don't want to lose any of my dirt <laughs> He's got a reputation to keep up. That's right. I wouldn't have, want to accidentally become more charismatic. Have you ever seen um have you ever seen Atlantis, like the Disney movie? Uh I think so, yeah. Do you remember the guy that like his whole thing was dirt and he like kept dirt in his bed? That's what just made me think of that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. A bag of dirt. Bag of holding is just full of dirt. Dirt. It's just 500 pounds of dirt. <laughs> that might come in handy. You never know. So while you're all sitting around kind of enjoying uh, 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 Sugar Cane's display of all of this new but useless stuff that she's just <laughs> bought with the money that came out of the Citadel... Um, <laughs> One of the townspeople comes running up to you, and uh, she uh, she looks at Ekron and she says, uh, "Could you come to the inn, uh, Mister Ekron, and the rest of your friends? There's something we really need you to see. There's somebody we really need you to talk to." Mister Ekron, someone's uh, developing quite the reputation. Yeah, I like the sound of Mister Ekron. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will. I think I will follow to the inn. 
<laughs> All right. So she, she leads you. She says, hurry up, hurry up, follow me. And uh, in you go. This is the same place where you stayed the night before, although you, you kind of left for the day, so you're coming back um, after you checked out, so to speak. And uh, they take you to a room that's just right immediately uh, to the left uh, uh, along a hallway. And this room is kind of dim, and, and, and there's a few candles that are burning. And uh, there's someone in there that looks like maybe a, a priestess from a local temple or something like that uh, that's leaning on uh, beside a bed, kneeling beside a bed, and she's tending to what looks like a kobold, like the kobolds that you found back in the Citadel. But he looks very, he, he looks injured and he looks tired and he's very, uh, very weak in his appearance. And uh, the, the, the priestess looks up at you and says, oh, I'm glad you're here. You, you need to hear what this kobold has to say. Hmm. Last time I tried to talk to dragons, we almost died, so... Yeah, I just kind of give the priestess a funny look and say, are people in this town in the habit of hanging out with kobolds? What's what's going on here? <laughs> this Good seems question. unusual. Yeah, he just kind of looks looks up and looks at you, and, uh, and it just in this really weak voice, you can say, you can hear him saying, please, hear what I have to say. The kobold is speaking? Yes. Oh. I like I'll, I'll like or near him and ask him what is I'll say, Kobold, what's your name? Uh what is your he, name? Kobold? He says my name is Cirrus S I R S S A S S. And I come from a tribe that is far to the north of here. We we live in a, a a a place in the Forgotten Realms that is called the Northern Lands. Oh, so he's not from the Citadel. No. Oh, okay. Hmm. But I've come here, he says, because of your Citadel. What do you know about the Citadel? Only that evil things come from it. And then he kind of coughs and kind of looks off to the left and then uh, looks back up at you. Well, that's true. We were down there. We found uh, a steam monster. There were goblins. Steam monsters. Yep, the goblins. There was a uh, priest that was actually a troll that was living inside of like a stone coffin. There was. Uh, there was a. There was a dragon that screwed us all over. Uh, there was a screwy dragon. There was a crazy <laughs> druid with bad fruit. Uh, it's real nasty down there. I don't advise anyone. In fact, we should just, we should probably like shutter the whole thing and like build like a barricade or something. And he, and he says, yeah, but you also, I, they've told me the tales. You also encountered the blights, didn't you? Which ones were the blights? I kind of I look I look at Sugarcane and say, "What is he talking about?" Aren't those the tree people? <laughs> and he he kind of looks over at Ekron and points at him and says, "Tree people, yes." <laughs> this is why they call him. What? Ekron. What brought you here? Yeah, Mister. <laughs> he says. Uh, about two or three weeks ago, about one moon's time back, uh, some goblins that said they were from the Citadel came and brought fruit to our tribe in the northern lands. Uh -oh. And we accepted it from them. In fact, they wanted almost nothing for it uh, by way of a price. So we enjoyed the fruit and we ate it. But then days later, all of a sudden... The blights were everywhere. Uh, they were attacking us. 
and my tribe sent me away to go back and figure out what had happened at the Citadel. So when I heard about you, I knew that you were the people I needed to talk to. Uh, I see. So the fruit has seeds that glee plant the lights. Am I reading that right? He says that is what we think happened. Oh. Well. Did you notice? For a couple of weeks, right? And we just defeated the. Just, we just we ju- the yeah, we just broke that. the curse. So his people might be. Or unless they're not That's alive. the way it works. That's true. Well, when we killed it, the that one, the. The one that we're there to save, like your senses, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, the w- the work. ones that were nearby did die when uh, you killed the druid. Okay, so the others. But, just the druid. but yeah. go ahead and make an ar- intelligence arcana check. All of us are just it, anybody that wants to can make one. Not. not today. Oh. <laughs> oh wait, that's an intelligence save. Shoot. No, that's that's uh, that's uh, well, actually, yeah, that works still. That works. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, your intelligence is five, right? I right, plus five. Okay. So so um. Sugarcane realizes that, yeah, while there may have been some trees that were mystically tied, that were present there, that were mystically tied to the the druid, um, it's pr- unlikely that trees that grow and develop that are miles and miles away are going to be the same, that they'll, they could continue to live and thrive on their own even after he dies. Uh, we may need to find how to break the curse. And for the tree, though, I feel like that would have done something. But also, if this is the start of the campaign, it probably didn't do something. <laughs> maybe right, it's not. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. it's it's not as magical as we think. Maybe it's more biological. Than magical. Yeah. Oh, it could be. In that case, there's no curse to break. Yeah, in that case, we just need to go kill them all. There might be a, trim some, might trim be some a, trees. A curse. He says, "You you curse. know how to kill them. Please, can you go help my people?" Yeah, man, we can do that. I mean, did you try fire? Right, okay. Yeah, guys, Sugarcane knows how to use fire, and that's... yeah, man. <laughs> we we found fire to be highly effective. Yeah. We also found that uh, shouting was very effective. Shouting. Yes, pretending to be a tree, <laughs> invisible in a tree, pretending to be the voice of a sentient tree. All right. And so, uh, yeah, and with this, all of the other people that are in the room that are watching you, the priestess, the woman that brought you there, anybody else that's there, they all just kind of look at each other like, pretending to be a tree? What What did they just say? They didn't just say that, did they? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and subterfuge subterfuge is important they're asked why we should um you know we've just survived multiple tree attacks already um you know why should we why should we journey all the way up to the northlands to help his people of course we want to help but why should we risk our lives I mean, because then they're point. just going to keep killing this, this has got to be a long ways away how far away is this a good question it's it's a easily 10 to 15 days journey if not further 10 to 15 days that's that's going to be a huge cut out of our profits <laughs> i mean how are we going to finance this how are we gonna you have 400 gold <laughs> <laughs> that Far. was hard Those he, he doesn't know that <laughs> <laughs> um 
Stop yelling out in front of all these townspeople how wealthy I am, okay? They don't need to know that. I'm going to get mugged in the street now. Thanks a lot, Sugarcane. He says, surely if you save us, our great leader will reward you. Who's your leader? Our leader is Krasda, but he can, he's, he's starting to, <laughs> he's starting to lose coherence now. So it just, it kind of comes out like this. <laughs> uh, is he dead? No. Did we lose him? No, you haven't lost him, but he's, okay. he's getting very, very weak now. Is a kobold? Um, and he kind of coughs and laughs a little bit and says, no, no, no. Again. <laughs> and then coughs again. Like Mr. Yes. Ekron? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Is it a dragon? Yeah, dragon? A dragon? Born? Form? All right, and now he can't he can't even say anything but he's shaking his head in the affirmative like yes. Oh, um wait, wait, is it that now was the question is he a dragon or was it is he a dragon born or did you suggest either one? Is, is he some kind of a dragon? Yeah, and he's shaking yes to that. Okay. Um Is he like this guy and I pointed Ekrid or like the big one? Dang it. Right. And he says, please, and the S kind of just drifts out of his tongue for just a moment. And then the, the life just leaves him. He's left there in the cot. He's died. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, we have to save him. I really should have tried to heal him before he died. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think he's character. Wait, wait, wait. Literally. Is he just casting your hit points? Because I can still save him if he just has zero hit points. Uh, try. <laughs> you could try casting cure wounds on him. I have cure wounds. I have good berries, so I guess I'm just gonna show so berries. Berry he's, he's dead. I mean, there there wasn't a whole lot anybody was gonna be able to do to help him in the long okay. run because of his condition. I mean, you, you might you could have prolonged his suffering by healing him, but he was gonna continue to deteriorate. So, and you knew that. So, this this wasn't you know. <laughs> well, I. Uh, I look to the priestess and I say, "What? Why was why was he dying? Like what? Why why did he was it, did he say that it was the fruit that killed him?" She says he he has many wounds and he was poisoned with something I haven't ever seen before. Oh, that's bad. Poisoned by a wound or poisoned by something that he ingested or. She just kind of shakes her head and looks at you and shrugs. She doesn't know. That would have been some useful information to know before he died, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I feel so mean. Um, well, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know, guys. I mean. I want think to go investigate this. Yes, I feel like we should go and investigate it because, first of all, who knows what kind of crazy antics we'll get into in fifteen days, <laughs> um, <laughs> and also I feel like if we don't, it'll come back to bite us in some way because it's like they're trees; like they're gonna destroy this village, yeah, but they're not gonna stop there. So, and also, every time it rains, they're just going to keep going. That's true. The trees are really dangerous. Yeah. Plus, if we go there, then we might get some more like intel into how we can just get rid of all of them so we don't have to travel anymore. Mm -hmm. And like the, the server tree. Well, I've spent most of my days since I left my clan on the road with a couple more. I'll, I'll travel to the northern lands. We'll check on this tree blight.
I'm I'm nominating Gray Lemire to come along. I don't. I'm assuming he's sleeping, so we'll I'll just wrap him up and tow him along. I have nominate Glory to come along. Gray Lemire probably had a very late night after you got back to the village. Would be my guess. He's probably doing some heavy drinking. Yeah. Getting into some sort of shenanigans. All right. So it is. You you actually over the next over the course of the next couple of weeks you have a fairly uneventful trip. The northern lands are kind of this isolated area, the Forgotten Realms, that are to the north. You have to cross this desert uh, to get there, but with decent provisions, which you're able to acquire for yourselves, it's it's not a difficult or particularly dangerous uh, trek. It's just it's a very long one. That, uh, that kind of makes it its own area, uh, separate and apart from, from much of the rest of the Forgotten Realms. Oh boy, and you've got a general feel for kind of how it's laid out, uh, so you, you, you kind of you know where you're going as you enter. And you, as you enter, you're coming from the south here, down here in the Great Waste. I'm gonna use, we'll use Ekron's token just to kind of represent the party here. Um, and uh, you, you've managed after a few days to make your way out of the desert and you're now heading up kind of toward the north, uh, toward uh, an area where you, you hope you're going to find this Cobalt clan based on some contacts that you've made. But um, as you're traveling along the road through uh, there's some hills to either side and a, a great mountain range off to your west. As you're traveling along this road, uh, you, you're just starting to feel a little bit uneasy about things. And what I'd like for your, everybody to do now is make a perception check. Okay. Let's get these funky rolls out of the way. I like to imagine that at this point, I'm too busy, like, pulling off my boots and, like, dumping sand out of them <laughs> <laughs> to notice whatever it is that's happening. Yeah. So, Swatting away the scorpions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is like late in the day. You've been traveling all day. You've, you've made your way to uh, a path that you're starting to see signs of life and grass all around you. As you see, even as this mountain range to the west has come in. And um, so I, I can let you decide on whatever kind of uh, marching order that you want to use here. I, I assume that Grey Lemire is still sleeping it off or something after two weeks. At any rate, he's not. Maybe he's a little behind you and he's going to catch up later. But it's just yeah, the yeah. three of you right now. Okay. Scouting party. That's what it is. Yep. And um, what you notice is, or at least what Sugarcane and Ekron managed to notice is that there are some creatures that are hiding just behind these rocks as you come along this path. And they are orcs. Like smaller than us orcs or like large orcs? Um, they're not giants or anything. They're roughly, you know, like humanoid size. And right now you're aware of three of them. And just as they get ready to jump out and ambush you, uh, at least Sugarcane and, and Ekron are aware of their presence. And let's roll for initiative. Okay. I'm not surprised. Crap, that was a good roll. Can I, can I have that roll anyway? Uh, did you... For oh, some reason, y'all are not going into the initiative here. I forgot to select my token. Yeah. 
Dang it. Okay. Yeah, I rolled a solid three. Oh, that's better. I'll take nice. that. Nice. Oh, dang it. I rolled a 13, but I didn't select my thing. All right, so here we go. So Bloki is not going to get a first turn here because he's surprised. Oh, dang it. And uh, this orc just kind of comes running right up behind him, just like his sugar cane kind of realizes they're there and her eyes get really wide. But no, bam, he's going to attack Baloki from behind. Um, and he has got a great axe that he's going to smash him with. I try to defend myself with my boot. I just hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, sand it. Then this one is going to come running at Ekron, also with the great axe. Oh, wow. The orcs are rolling well tonight. Where are these rolls going? I'm not Any seeing Any of them. their rolls? Yeah, uh, yeah these rolls are whispering for some reason. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can adjust that so it doesn't happen. So it's nine dam. It was seven attack seventeen nine damage to, uh, to uh, Baloki. Oh yeah, that'll hit. The boot and hit. it's attack uh, twenty two ten slashing to, uh, to, to Ekron. And then I'm gonna see if I can turn on, these rolls so that they. Ouch. Nine damage, you said. Yeah. Ouch. Let's see here. This guy's hit like a truck. All right, so now it should it should work. The last one that's going after sugarcane should work correctly. Yeah, that five, works. Five damage to sugarcane, and Oof. it is now sugarcane's turn. Okay, cool. Well, I am going to take a free action and shift into my, hmm, I forget which one's better. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shift into my panther form. Okay. I'm going to bite him. Oh, my token looks so cool! Yeah, it's uh, the official Droll20 token. I, I love in. it. Garbage roll, though. My goodness. Yeah, that's not going to hit, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's not a hit. Okay, well, I have to disengage him to get away. Uh, yeah, you would. You give him a free attack, in other words. Unless you can disengage as a bonus action. Right. I don't think I have any. Eh, I'll just I'll just stay where I'm at. There's no real way. There's nowhere I could really. Okay. Well, you can open up this character sheet, and it's a Panther character sheet, if you want to see exactly what he can do. But I don't think there's anything that that sh that she can do to avoid this. Yeah, to disengage as a bonus action or anything, so. No, I don't think there is. All right, that gets us to Ekron's turn. Okay. Um, thing is, based on my position right now, if I use my breath attack... I can angle it so that I don't hit sugar cane, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, you could kind of shift your way around a little bit without disengaging, and then it's a cone. That's what attack, I'm wondering. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you shifted like to about right here, you could angle it so that it doesn't affect her. Well, would that be close enough to hit both of these guys? What's the range on it? I think it's only 15. Yeah, it, it'll be enough. I, I, you can hit them both. Perfect. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I'm going to move over here. Yep. And I'm going to... 
in breath and Oh, that did not work. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Giving me an error. Uh oh. Uh, interesting. Let me see if I can add it again. Do they have to make a deck save or a constitution save? I think it's, it would be. I, I actually don't remember from the last time I did it. The iconic breath isn't in the. It might just be under breath attack. You're a white dragonborn, right? Right. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a constitution save. Constitution save, or what? Or they take uh, 2d6 cold damage. Okay. And the DC. Three, is, yeah. The DC is going to be 8. Plus Ekron's constitution modifier plus his proficiency bonus. Alright. Get like this. I don't know if that's right or not. Um, um I think take out the plus three and yeah, it'll be correct. It's just two D six. Yeah. Just straight up 2d6. Yeah. Okay, so your what is your constitution modifier? Um, uh, one. The constitution modifier is one. Okay, so it's, it's nine plus three is twelve. They've got a they've got a save against twelve. So there's the first one. Oh, I'm having the same problem. Oh dang. How about that? So then this update has broken a couple of things. So, but I can do it this way. So hang on. Uh, we're we're saving. I save with con. Yeah. Well, okay. It did so. It's just the first two are going to count. So the first one passes. The second one does not. So the first one's only going to take three, but the second one is going to take the full seven. He, like, takes the full brunt of the attack. And so anything else for Ekron's turn? Um, I have a little bit of movement left, right? Yes. I'll stay engaged, but I'll move back over near. Near the panther, sugar cane? Yeah. Okay. That gets us to the top of another turn with Baloki. Okay. Um, and I'm engaged with this guy here now, right? Right. He's right here next to me. Uh... Shoot. I would have disadvantage. Or actually, I don't even think I could shoot him. Because he's too close to me. Um, I'm going to go after him with the hand axe. I'm going to take a swing at him with the hand axe. Okay. See what that gets me. So that's a hit. slashing damage all right so so blokey just it just kind of lodges the hand axe like straight into the side of his shoulder and then pulls it back out he, he screams in protest and is now going to go at blokey again with his great axe oh that hits yeah <laughs> that'll do it no so this is pretty Jeez. brutal. 
This is some pretty brutal stuff going on here. <laughs> All right, here comes Ekrans. 16 misses. Yeah, it misses. And the orc's going to go after Panther Sugarcane now. Okay. And I impose and I disadvantage because of protection. Yeah, All right. that's... So that's going to be a miss with a disadvantage. As a disadvantage? Yep. Okay, sweet. Oh, nice. And it's Sugarcane's oh. turn. All right, I am going to try to bite that same orc one more time. If this doesn't work out, then I'm going to use a free action to shift back into regular Sugarcane. Okay. Cane. So there's a Love hit. Ooh. Roll for damage. Three. Now, how That's does not very good. that happen? A plus four? It's four. And you only a roll one. a three? I it's a it's a plus four and then I got a one. For the little like roll that roll, I have on my You rolled a two. I don't know why that says plus four there. Oh, on the bite? Yeah. I think that you're must starting be, at a negative one. That right? must be the at attack. That must that's, be... Yeah, that's the attack The bonus. attack bonus. All right, uh, so... Uh, yeah, so you you're, you grab a hold of his arm and, and uh, rip a nice-sized piece of flesh out of it. And uh, that's Ekron again. Uh, which is the okay? Never mind. Okay, so that's I'm gonna attack this one by right there. Uh, that one. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna swing at him with my glaive. Words. Yeah, that is not a hit. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm up. Or... Yeah, I don't think I can really do anything else, and I, I don't need to move, so. Yep. Yeah, Bloki's up. Okay. I'm hurting pretty bad. I think I'm going to heal myself. Because <laughs> um, I don't think I can take another hit like that. So, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. At level one, <laughs> and I get four hit points. <laughs> oh, joy! That take an action? Yeah, that that's an action. Um, pretty sure. Yeah, that's one action. Yeah. Uh, now to decide if I'm gonna try to get away from this thing. There's no way for me to do it without him getting in the nick of opportunity. Yeah. If you get within range of me, though, do you still get protection or? But you, but no. you know, yeah, you wouldn't get it. I wouldn't think if you're not engaged when the attack is made. Yeah. But I would point out that he's going to go next anyway. So. Yeah. That's true. He's just going to move to to cut the distance. I'll just hang where I'm at and hope he doesn't hit me. All right. All right, so here goes the one near Baloki. Miss. That misses. That <gasps> misses. Here goes the one near Ekron. Oh! Oh, my God. Oh, Did Eight. they still have disadvantage? Uh, no, they don't have disadvantage no, attacking Ekron. No. So, so that's 12 damage with the crit. And then here is the one near Sugarcane with disadvantage. Misses again. I would have missed anyway. Okay, I'll avenge you, Ekron. <laughs> I'm gonna, wait, is it my turn? It is your turn. Okay, cool. I'm going to fight him. That's a hit. Ooh. Okay. Bite him. Yeah. yeah. So the so you just leap up and you knock him over on his back and just rip out his jugular 
and uh, kill him and uh, then just turn around fiercely toward the other ones and roar at them. Are they going to leave us alone now? No. Do something ferocious to scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do not have of things. To... Can I growl? Do I? Is it? Does it spend an action to growl? Yeah, really? That, that would cost an action at this point. But it's Ekron's turn. Oh man. Okay. Well, I'm going to use all of my lion hands points. Okay. <laughs> Uh, which I think counts as my action. Yes. Then I'm just gonna continue to stand here, get in the way. Okay. And that gets us to Baloki's turn. Okay. I look over, I see Ekron uh, in a tough spot casting his lay on hands on himself and I suddenly realize I can shoot people that are not next to me so I turn around <laughs> and, and I like hip draw full disclosure and I'm going to shoot at the orc that's right next to Ekron. Okay. That's a hit. Yeah. Come on. Ooh. Eight piercing plus four thunder damage. Oh, wow. So that just rips oh, into his torso. Oh, eight plus four? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that just rips into his torso and he falls over backwards dead onto the roadway. Yes. Minutes. Boom. It's a loud thunderous crack as he falls. All right. So this one here... Um, is going to use his full action to disengage and he is just going to start fleeing back this way back toward the 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 hills oh, to no. your west kill him i'm going to shoot him if i want I, I, I want to we want I, we want to catch this fool yeah i think they may have just been like petty thieves well yeah. Shoot him in the ankle. I yeah. So on that last turn, I take my bonus action to reload, and it, it's, as soon as I can, I'm going to take a shot at this guy. Okay. He's not getting away. Well, okay. So Sugarcane's got a turn now. Well, after him, how how fast can um? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can outrun the orc. <laughs> cool. If that's I what can't... you're worried about. It doesn't tell me what my speed is. However, I'll chase after him and, like, tackle him, I guess. Yeah, it says speed 50 feet. Yeah, that's what I figured, 50 feet. Yeah, I'll, I'll run after him and drag him back. Okay. So you're going to drag him back. <laughs> so you're going to try to, like, uh, you're going to try to grapple with him and just I hold do. him down? Yes. All right, so we're going to make an opposed strength athletics check. You got you got to move where you're next to him, and then we'll make an opposed strength athletics check. Can't see him. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so there's his roll. He rolls an eleven. You need to roll a strength athletics check. Going to be strength um, probably. Strength. I have a. 14 strength so that fails no no you rolled you roll your own check to grapple with oh, him and we, then we okay. see which one is higher gotcha. no you're not able to catch him and yes. he continues to run off toward the hills or he's going to in a minute but you're not able to restrain him yeah. and now it's Ekron's turn Stop that orc. Is he is he still within trap like speed from me that I can catch him? Oh yeah. Yeah, he he's his movement is only uh thirty feet and you've got thirty feet of movement, so he couldn't have gone further right. than thirty. All up on him. I'm gonna wrap my tail around him and grapple him and try to throw him to the ground. Okay.
Oh, oh all oh, right. Oh, so yeah, you just body slam him into the ground. Boom. He's scared of Mr. Ekron. <laughs> Mr. Ekron. That's right. All right, Bloki. Okay. All right. Um. Oh wait, do we know if these things can speak common? Because I don't know if any of us know orc. I do mm. not know orcish. Nope. I know. Or anything like that. Oh. I think the update may have gotten rid of my. Yeah, they got rid of all of my proficiencies. Oh, yeah. Go into the, the settings and then turn the simple setting on. Dude. Uh, proficiency. Okay. Just, I'll we'll come back. Um, I. Let's see. My movement's only 25 feet. I don't even know if I can get over there. Let's see. I don't really want to shoot. Oh, no, I can get there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to walk right up to him, and I'm just going to, like, short range, pull out my... Oh, how do I want to... Hmm. Yeah, pull out my light crossbow, and I'm just going to try to plug him in the head while he's grappled and on the ground, and... Okay. and Akron has him. You've got advantage. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Thank yeah, God. So, no problem. You hit him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so surprisingly, you're not quite able to take him out with that hit. <laughs> it it kind of sticks into his neck, but he's still just kind of jerking around and, and growling as you do that I, okay as a as a bonus action i just kick grass on him just helplessly just ah just frustration All give right. up orc gosh die so, so he's going to try to struggle free here but it's going to be i would think he'd be at disadvantage since he's on the ground and yeah. he just He's, he's going to roll with disadvantage against Ekron to try to get free. That's how we'll do that. So he's got a five. Do I do another athletics check yeah. or just strength? Strength. Oh, well, athletics if you've got it, yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Uh, he's not going anywhere. You've got him pinned down really well between the three of you. Can we, like, ask him if he speaks common and see what he does? Being in combat. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you're gonna, you gotta, you're gonna need to try to figure out a way to get him to give up. Either persuading him or threatening him or something. Okay, uh, I'll persuade him. Can I say that I've been practicing my flute on the way over here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. If you tell us, if you tell us, if you tell us who you are and where you came from, I will play my flute for you. So I guess you drop out of panther form to do this. Yes, I did. I didn't say I did. It's a free action. So it, it sounded doesn't... like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I just like pull the flute out of the bag of holding, and it's like. Just trying to keep, like, gnawing on it or something. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and make your persuasion check, but we're going to take five points off of it because I really don't know why an orc would care about listening to you perform on the flute. <laughs> I believe in myself, guys. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, so it, you don't wow. so much convince him as he really can't figure out what in the world you're doing talking this nonsense about a flute and suddenly pulling it out and showing him. So he's in the mood now to talk, at least. Okay. Why did you attack us? Because he's an orc. That's what they do. They do this all the time. Play that flute. Stay, he stay says, orcs, orcs are mighty. Orcs rob silly humans who run a long road. See, I told you. It's what they do. Oh, Dragon. Well, are there, are there any more of you? Yes, many more. Soon we will overrun entire countryside. 
we powerful. I just shake my head. <laughs> so okay. They're not going to do that. This already gave me, pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. He Thank says, you for your time. I guess it feels a deal. <laughs> you, you let me go or you will regret it. Our chieftain will come and destroy you and all your friends. Who's your chieftain? Good question. Our chieftain is Grog, the mighty. Grog Strongjaw? <laughs> um, uh, excuse me. Grog is an ale. Thank you very much. <laughs> From uh, Tales of Monkey Island. Uh, he says, no, Grog is orc. Powerful orc. Clearly this man has never heard of LucasArts. Um... <laughs> Stop your orc face. That's what no, I was saying. Wait. I I am not at all inclined to to have a conversation with an orc, and I've just got my gun drawn on him, just looking at Sugarcane and Ekron to see like, can I do it? Can you, I do it? You can execute him if you want to. No, oh, no, wait! I gotta play the flute for him. A deal is a deal. <laughs> you can I'm gonna slowly the reach over and grab his great axe. All right, so I'll I'll play I'll play the flute for him. Okay. Go ahead and make a performance uh, check, that which I think is ceremoniously one. I have one on performance. Oh, you do actually have performance. Oh well, okay. So you can probably play the flute a little bit, not great, but you manage to play a, a few notes that are somewhat recognizable as some kind of familiar song of some type. She's playing Mary Had a Little Lamb, isn't she? <laughs> and it's out of tune. Yeah. Well, I was, <laughs> I'm just playing a really crummy version of um, of Wiggle by Jason. <laughs> 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 ha, ha, he says, kill me. Kill me, dwarf. I would rather die than listen to this any longer. Gladly. And I shoot him in the <laughs> just for good measure, I'm gonna take his his own great axe, and I'm just gonna like decapitate his head, but leave it like in the ground. Oh, so okay. For, for the other orcs to find. Oh yeah. Send the message. <laughs> ward off. There's some it. new heroes in town. Watch out. That's right. <laughs> but don't come after us in numbers of more than three. Please. Yes. yes. <laughs> we're, we're like a Mexican drug cartel. We kill them and then we cut their heads off. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe we do that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we'll, like we'll flute you until you beg for death. All right. Well, we'll we're going to wind it down uh, there for tonight. A, a couple of things. Uh, first off, I'm going to go ahead and turn the recording off for us.